Hello, hello. Hey, Oliver. Bonjour. Welcome back. Hope Thanks. everyone's doing good. Um, we'll let a few people pile on. I see the numbers are slowly growing. So, uh, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Grasshopper 101, day two of our Grasshopper Masterclass. And we'll be picking up pretty quickly from where we left off yesterday. Um, I think we were all talking this morning. We were kind of uh, blown away with the engagement and, uh, you know, how many people tuned in uh, for the whole session yesterday. We covered a lot yesterday, didn't we, Guillaume? Um, yeah, I was exhausted. And I, I'm sure you guys were exhausted, <laughs> in a good way. too. Yeah. It was a lot. <laughs> it's, all, it's all in there. It's all in your mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think today we'll be a little uh, quicker. We'll be kind of covering uh, less ground, but we'll still be going over some of the more complicated and important parts of Grasshopper, which are data trees. Um, as always, I'd love to kick this off. I already asked in the comments I'm just looking over, please post where you're from. And actually, I really want to know if there's anyone out there tuning in from the UK today, because we were just talking, uh, Guillaume is representing, we've got some people from the US and France. Faisal's representing from people in Nigeria. Um, I am not seeing anyone from the UK, so don't let me down, guys. I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> we need to quickly, a... quickly take a plane or a train. And oh, here we go, can... Manchester. There we go. Um, Boom. Fine. We got a UK. We got a UK. We got Cyprus. Uh, a couple from Portugal, India. I know it's it's late in India, but we did time this at this time to just catch a uh india to the to the uh like la basically into indonesia wow that must be that's definitely a bit later brazil to the ben colombia what's going on barcelona oh this is this is awesome we've seen through the registrations that we got florida nice uh we've seen from the registrations that uh you know it's gone all around the world um we've i think we have over 50 or 60 different countries uh that people have registered from uh which is awesome to see um so yeah as always um you know thank you guys for joining us um if you guys are not already signed up to our discord please join our discord it should be in the link uh below uh youtube let me just triple check that yeah uh, and you also have a link to the google drive we upload uh, the files from yesterday onto the google drive there's a 101 folder and 102 um, so do stay tuned for that. Please uh, comment any questions you have uh, in the YouTube comments or on Discord. Um, you know, same rules apply as yesterday. There are no stupid questions. Please ask uh, anything that you want. If you're thinking about it, other people are probably thinking about it as well. And I think you guys absolutely killed it yesterday with the questions. There was um, some really good ones. And uh, hopefully we'll field some more today. Uh, as always... This is a completely free uh, course. We're trying to do this to help uh, spread the architect network word. And you can help us by just simply liking and subscribing, just hitting that stupid little button down there. Uh, really helps us out. We will also be releasing a 103 bonus class afterwards. So we're gonna be editing the videos, putting it onto our website. And for a small fee, you can access the 103 class. And this would really help us out. It's going to be fairly affordable, but it's going to help us out to make future courses. We're working on a Revit course, a Rhino Insights course, but we also want to do like Enscape, Follogram, and all other kind of cool stuff. Uh, so, you know, give us a little like and subscribe. You can follow us on our Instagram as well. That's where we post everything that's going on. Um, finally, if you guys want a certificate for today for attendance, uh, in the Discord, there is a post for today's uh, sign up. So if you signed up yesterday, that's for the 101. You need to sign up again for today for the 102. So you've done both classes, right? Um, so I think Faisal uh, will post that in the Discord. I think it's in the chat as well uh, as we go. Uh, but make sure to fill that out because that's how we'll we'll work out your certificates. Someone asked, what will 103 be about? Great question. So 103, I'll tell you what uh, the challenge is at the end of it, but essentially we'll be deconstructing Big's Serpentine Pavilion in 
uh, a fairly good amount of detail, right? And so we'll go over the design script and also detail it with some other things. Uh, hello from Italy. Hello from Nigeria. We've got some awesome, uh, a, a, a Revit version of this would also be helpful. Yeah, it's coming, man. It's coming. We'll get there. Uh, all right. So that's a little bit of the introduction. We're not going to hang around too much today. Um, we're going to kind of jump fairly quickly into it. So um, I don't know if there's anything else I miss, Guillaume, but uh, let's just jump into it, shall we? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do Let's do this thing. So, okay, let me add my screen and we'll we'll keep our faces up for a little bit. All right, guys, so welcome to Grasshopper 102. Uh, so this is a follow-on that dovetails behind uh, the Grasshopper 101 that we did today. Obviously, uh, for those of you who were with us yesterday, you would have heard of us saying, uh, we're going to be explaining this tomorrow, so stay tuned, et cetera, et cetera. So now this is the point where we explain those other things. Uh, today is really going to be focused on uh, three things. Uh, we're going to cover less uh, ground in overall, but they're going to be kind of uh, more deep dived into these subjects. So I'm going to start off by just giving you guys some tips and tricks about Grasshopper. So, you know, it's slightly more interface stuff. We'll be talking about what clusters are and uh, if and statements and stuff like that. Uh, and then we'll uh, start off a little building challenge, uh, which is going to be in two parts. We'll talk about data trees. So today is really about data trees. Um, I always tell people, once you've mastered data trees, psh, grasshopper, you are like a grasshopper wizard. Like grasshopper suddenly makes sense. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll finish that off continuing our building script by kind of playing around with the panelization of the facade. Um, so that's going to be what we're going to do today. Um, I think to kick things off, I'm going to jump into some tips and tricks on Grasshopper. Me and Guillaume are going to hide in the background, and uh, I'll take you guys through some good little Grasshopper tips and tricks. All right. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's get into it. Okay, guys. So uh, tips and tricks. We're really here, just going to give you some little uh, bits of advice that we've picked up, some shortcuts, some good best practices for how to use Grasshopper. Some people asked some questions yesterday about um, uh, you know, what, what are best practices for laying out Grasshopper and that kind of stuff. And we'll touch on a little bit of that today, which we're starting with layout, right? We talked a bit about this a little bit, but yeah, Grasshopper does have this grid in the background. And it is good to use the grid as a bit of a guideline for laying out your scripts, right? It doesn't mean we have to be super you know, strict about this and make sure like components fit exactly in the grid. But the grid is there for a reason. And it's a really nice way to organize uh, your scripts and make it a little bit cleaner. Like we said yesterday, you know, there, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a kind of badge of honor for your grasshopper scripts looking like this insane, crazy spaghetti mess. Uh, if you're, you know, a little bit more organized, it can be actually uh, quite beautiful and also fairly readable. So the other reason that we do this is because in practice, you know, sometimes you're, you're responsible for a script, but you may not always be on that project, right? You get put onto another project. For example, let's say I'm working on a project and I've developed this really important script that drives the massing that's, that's key to the design. And then I go on holiday. Guillaume has to come in and he's going to pick up my work. Uh, and then he doesn't want to inherit some crazy spaghetti mess, right? He wants to inherit something <laughs> that he can actually read and see and understand quickly. No uh, offense for the Italians in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Italians quite into uh, Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I love spaghetti, spaghetti, but not on the yeah. screen. We're big fans of spaghetti, just not, not in grasshopper. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, you know, let me jump into Grasshopper. I mean, here's a good diagram. You can see clearly, uh, you know, this is a nice way you have like the columns you can use in uh, in the grid to align things. So like, you know, the inputs are all sort of in, in one kind of their own zone. The function is its own little inner column and then you have an output. Also notice, I do have a habit. This, this comes from a background working at front and the plugin called Elefront. 
where I, I actually, you know, I use components like this to name the inputs and the outputs. Uh, we had a few people asking about that, um, but you know, they're not needed. It's just a, a practice that I've picked up on. Um, you can rename it. So let me go in and actually uh, uh, look at this. So what, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you uh, some of this kind of renaming. And then what I'll do is actually look at uh, the script from yesterday and kind of clean it up a little bit, which I've already uh, kind of done. So this is the script from yesterday. Um, I'm not going to really need um, to show the Rhino view because I'm really just interested in Grasshopper right now. Uh, but this is what I posted in the Grasshopper uh, in our, sorry, Google Drive. And you can see I've already done a little bit of uh, cleaning and things like that, right? So you notice that uh, I have like quite a clear uh, break between massing, the scripted massing, the manual massing, uh, and the actual building element parts, right? And what you can do with these kind of components, uh, you do have to be careful that you're using the right ones. Like if, if the thing that's coming out of these, this output is a curve, then I can use the curve component or the point component. The geometry component is quite good. It's fairly open. Like I, I think I could use the geometry component here. Uh, but what you can do with these components, which is nice, is you can right click on these and where it says curve, you can actually replace this with like floor plate curve, right? Um, and this is a good way to just rename, uh, you know, name things that are going on. You will notice that this guy doesn't inherit it. But Guillaume, you had a, a way to do that. Actually, I'd never seen that before. What was your little shortcut? Yeah, so if yeah. you drag from the right one and then just press Alt once, it turns yeah. red. Yeah. Well, actually, you may, it works when it's just a brand new. Oh, it did work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, That's it's a bit nice. finicky sometimes, but um, yeah. it does help. But it's a nice way to just uh, organize your script. Now, this is not a typical thing. This is something I've picked up in the past, um, which actually comes from Elephant, which has a, uh, description as a description component, um, which literally does nothing, right? It just uh, basically inherits uh, what you last put into it. And you can type in here curve one, two, three. And this one or, or, or also automatically uh, inherits the name. But I won't go into that because, you know, this is a specific plugin, but using just the Grasshopper plugin, you can start to rename your things, especially like parameters. You can rename this as building width, building length, floor to floors and stuff like that. So naming uh, your script is really important, which is kind of what, what this slide uh, was really about. This next slide is, uh, you can kind of see, I've started to organize the script into areas. And so, with the little alignment tools, I can select components and use the little alignment things to create like these this break within my script. So here is this kind of break. And this was because we kind of ended the massing stage and we're beginning uh, the building element stage. And this, uh, this guy should be flattened in case I forgot to save that. I'll replace that. Uh, this is because I wanted to like have the ability to switch from the modeled mass to the manual mass. Uh, which we could do in a couple of different uh, nice ways. But here I've kind of, you can see the way I'm lay, laying out the script. I'm creating some like vertical alignment and breaks. Like this is where my script breaks. This is where it starts here. I can like align all these things together. Um, I can also uh, just organize these a little bit. You also see though horizontally, I also try and align the components a little bit more. So it's not all like, you know, it's an, sometimes you see, stuff like this, right? And and this does happen when you're working in Grasshopper. But once the script is good, it's worth spending that extra five minutes to just organize your script. It saves you, you know, it really pays out in the long run uh, when you're kind of working these things out. One little tip that's good for, for giving you a bit of space, because sometimes your script is like all clustered up, is by just holding down the Alt key, and then you click on the canvas, you actually can create um, a little bit of space for you vertically, right? This can also be done horizontally by you hold down Alt, click, and then tap Alt again, and it turns into horizontal, right? 
And so this is like a really nice way uh, to just 